today's episode, we look at our pre-season friendlies, we take on Leicester in a live com, and we check out our current transfers. And welcome guys back for another episode of Building Bournemouth. Comment below or like the video if you did like the little highlights feature. I got it from MUTV Paul. Um, hope he doesn't mind me using that sort of style, but it's a great way to introduce the series and episode. So let's crack on. Let's have a look at our preseason friendlies. And welcome back, guys. So here we are. As you can see, we had friendlies against Rangers, Cliftonville, Christchurch, Dortmund, Weymouth, and Napoli. Now, what I do like to do with my friendlies is I like to play a tough opposition and then an easier opposition just for match fitness. Now, as you can see from the results, there's a pretty mixed bag. A uh, 2 2 draw against Rangers away from home. Char Charlie Daniels with a penalty and then Lewis Cook with a strike. Cliftonville, very tough of opposition, although not a very high reputation team, I must say. Um, away from home, they were obviously not favourites. We were definite favourites. We did win 3-2 in the end, thanks to an own goal. Um, first half performance was fantastic. Uh, Moussa, Jordan Ibe, and then, as I said, an own goal, giving us the three goals. And then we sort of collapsed in the second half, where I did make a couple of changes. Next game, Christchurch, a very local team to myself, uh, the team I grew up playing football for. I always like to play them as Bournemouth, give them a little bit of cash, help them progress. We did win an emphatic 8-0. Um, as you can see, Hindman with two, Musse with one, Mahoney with one, Afobi Simpson with one each, and Jermaine Defoe with two also. Now here comes the first of our tough opposition, real top quality opposition. I like to throw in a couple each pre-season. Uh, Dortmund away it was this time. Our scorer Jermaine Defoe, they pretty much dominated the game, it has to be said. Uh, poor performances from Adam Smith and Nathan Ake. Um, Ryan Fraser not reaching the level that we expect of him. Um, Obama Yang and Scherler with the goals. The Scherler penalty probably shouldn't have been a penalty, but it's pre-season, I'll let it slide. An easy opposition in Weymouth, a 6-0 victory at home. Benekafobi, Mikel Njajoli, Dale Fry, Dan Gosling and Joshua King with the goals. And again, don't really take into account player ratings when we're playing such easy opposition. Game against Napoli to finish off pre-season away from home. They did dominate us fully. They were a much tougher opposition than Dortmund. Uh, Mertens and Insigne with the goals. And welcome guys to our transfer history. As you can see, we've got some players coming in and a couple going out. Now we did use the majority of our transfer budget. So this will be the final ins and outs for this transfer window in August. Um, so yeah, I know I said in the first episode that we'd be getting rid of quite a few players. Uh, Mark Pugh, Adam Ferrici, I mentioned. Um, I did mention Royce Wiggins and he has gone out to Cardiff for 775k. Um, let's have a look at the ins, starting with the loans. Christian Bielik, a very good central defender, Polish. At Arsenal on a full contract, um, we will be using him as a backup role. Maybe using him in the Carabao Cup, also known as the EFL Cup. He seems a decent backup option. Al Mame Torre. Now, I didn't personally sign this player. My director of football scouted him up, made a loan offer. And I looked at him, I thought, yeah, he's decent backup for Adam Smith. We needed another backup for Adam Smith because uh, we, we only had him and Simon Francis, who could play there. So that's a good, decent option at right back. Now, next is we have Jack Evans from Blackburn, a very young player. Did have higher potential before he moved to our club, so maybe that's a shift in uh, ability of the league. Central midfielder, ball winning midfielder, or Carrillero. Yeah, he looks, he looks okay. I mean, his mental stats are pretty good. I imagine with 19 aggression, he's going to get sent off quite a bit or pick up a quite quite a few yellow cards, um, bravery, determination and teamwork as well as work rate are fantastic. So we'll see how he develops. Sam Dalby is the next one. Striker from Leighton Orient. 
another lower league player that turns into an absolute beast of a striker. Again, one and a half star to two, three stars potential. Not fantastic. I will be looking for him to develop. Um, he's only 17, so he's got a few years before he can reach our first team. And yeah, let's see how he develops. I like the look of him. Tristan Nidam. Now, a player that most FM players will know that Ipswich Town do develop and create very good young players. Uh, this lad is a deep line playmaker at True, but I want to try and get him into that Carrillero switches mentality. Um, I was hoping that his Mazala ability would be a little bit higher, but his potential is four and a half stars with the black stars. So yeah, that's perfect for me. 17 years old, plenty of time to develop with that one. Next, we come into sort of the big money transfers of 1.7 million turning into 4.5 million. Esri Konsa brought him in, gone straight back on, on loan to Cholton, mainly because they wouldn't accept the transfer otherwise. And also, I kind of signed too many defenders, in truth. Um, but he looks good. It's two-star um, ability. And then I think it's about three or four-star potential. 19 years old, English. Then we have Christopher Ayer from Celtic, the Norwegian superstar. Valued at 2.6 million. Stats are pretty awesome all around. Can play centre-back, defensive midfield and central midfield. Looking at his stats from Celtic, his centre-back uh, average rating was the highest throughout the Champions League qualifying campaign. Um, so that's where I'm going to be playing him the most. Dale Fry, 4.5 million, turning into 11.25. A decent signing. Do have a Bournemouth save on my mobile version of Football Manager 2018. Um, I've signed him on there and he turns into an absolute god. So I'm hoping he can do the same on this version of Football Manager. Again, current ability, two and a half stars, which is just short of what I need for a first team player at Bournemouth. Uh, but potential is three to four stars. And again, looking at those stats, because we will be playing centre-backs, they look pretty decent. It's not one stat below 11, which is averagely OK. And being 19, he is expected to get much better. So those are the ins and outs. And here we are at our tactics screen. Now, as you know, we will be playing Leicester City in the first league game of the season. This is what we're going to go for. Um, now, I've sorted players from... The average ratings of all three tough opposition games in our preseason friendly. So that's Rangers, Dortmund, and Napoli. Now, obviously, our ratings weren't that great. I'm hoping that we can get a result here. Now, one thing I should mention is the board wanted possession football as a philosophy. Now, I don't like it as a philosophy. If you're winning the league, but you're not playing possession football, they will still sack you. So something that FM probably needs to take into consideration. To counter that, I put developing young players and signing young players for the first team on as a philosophy. That's the only way that I could get rid of possession football. The Bournemouth chairman does not like direct football. He does not like counter-attacking football. So that's what we did. Now, funnily enough, I made a possession tactic just in case I couldn't the board to see my way of thinking. But it turns out that this tactic works better than my counter-attacking tactic. So let's just have a look at the instructions and what we will be doing. So we're going to be playing a standard. This is mainly for teams that we considered evens favourites and considered not favourite. If we're considered favourites for the game, control would be our favourite uh, team instruction there. However, we're going to go with a fluid shape, lower tempo, balanced width, don't want to spread it too far because we are only playing flat four flat four and two up front um so we're, our lines of breaking are very susceptible to that uh, slightly higher defensive line just keep the defense close to the midfield so there's not that much space in between so they can play in uh, close down more use tighter marking exploit the middle now this is one thing that i don't know if it's going to work but what I've been seeing is a very low percentage of crosses completed. So my thinking is go through the middle and there'll be less crosses. Also, what I've done with that as well on the player instructions of our wide players is to put 
the crosses into the far post. I've noticed, especially with corners, that anything aimed at the far post, you have a higher success rate with um, than not aiming at the far post. Going to keep the passing short, retain possession, keeping in with that possession mentality. Again, not too sure on mixed crosses, so I'm just going to leave that uh, as mixed crosses. Don't want a specific one at the moment. If we find that our strikers are not are not scoring a lot of the crosses in the air, then we might go to low crosses. If we find that they are scoring a lot in the air, then we'll go to float. Um, keeping these two very, very neutral, so not specifically running at defence. I kind of quite like the passing element. Not being too expressive or too disciplined that our creative control is taken away. Um, and our freedom of movement is stick to positions. As I've said, we've only got four and four in the midfield and defence, so I don't want to be letting them break too often. Now, as you can see, player roles, we are going with normal goalkeeper in goal, with Begovic is our go going to be our number one goalkeeper this season. Daniels and Adam Smith starting this game are wing-backs, and we are going to be playing that wing-back defending role, just because I don't want to commit too many men forward and get caught on the counter-attack. Again, central defence. Um, this is mainly because when we were playing in pre-season, our ball-playing defenders were playing too many long balls forward, so we lost the ball a lot. So what I've done now is make it cent central defence, fewer risky passes, and hopefully that will counteract that. Gone with these two roles in the middle of midfielder, Carrilero and Mazala. Two of the new roles added to FM18. I'm going to see how they work together. If they don't work together, I will keep the Mazala and change this one to something else. Maybe a ball winning, maybe a deep line playmaker. Wingers are going to be uh, just wingers at the moment. I know Mark Pugh cannot play this role very effectively. He is more suited to the wide midfield role. But I don't want to put that in because it restricts them from getting forward and helping the strikers. Now, the strikers were advanced forward and poacher, which Jermaine Defoe is. But a phobie is more of a complete forward. So I'm going to try him with that today. Um, I haven't played him as a complete forward in pre-season. Um, I played him as an advanced forward and he got an average of a 6.4 through pre-season in those tough games. Uh, Jermaine Defoe can play either poacher or advanced forward, so I would like to see him play a poacher more effectively than he has done recently. Um, and that's the starting lineup. To be honest with you, there's there's not much more to say about that. So let's crack on with the game. And welcome to the game, guys. So it looks like Leicester are going with a four-three-three variation. Um, what I have noticed is Jamie Vardy is not in the picture. So that could be good news for us. However, Mares and Gray will be a definite threat. Now, what I do like to do is I like to set my opposition instructions. Um, something I've always done. So I would always set the striker to tight marking and closing down. I would always set the central midfielders and defensive midfielders to just tight marking um, and wingers to closing down as well. Whenever I see that injury symbol, I will go in hard just because I'm a nice guy like that um, and then show everyone onto their weaker foot. So that's how I set up my opposition instructions. Whether it's right, whether it's wrong, I just do it anyway. Now, we are going to talk to the team. We are assertively going to say, good luck, lads. Go out there and pull off an upset. No one's really bothered. Hand over to Jason. Nah, no one really cares. Here we go. Then Mara's on the board. Tries to get a cross in. Great, great save by Begovic. Now we've got Adam Smith over throw. Fraser. Can he get the ball in? He does. Gets a block. Off for a corner. I uh, what a goal! Get in there, lad. One nil. Get in there. Come on. They have got a highlight straight away, which is disappointing. But it's to us. Defoe's there. Ah, oh, Maguire cuts out the ball to the middle. So a great start for Christopher. I uh, Fuchs with the free kick hits the wall. Great job by the wall. Done its job, 
and then the ball comes in. Begovic claims it. Fraser attacking Arta. Oh, Pugh's offside. It's unlucky. Arta again loses out to Ndidi. Ignacio, Gray. Oh, it's a bit of a mix up. Oh, but Gray was offside. Arta puts a ball in. Pew. Oh, what a save by Sean Michael. Absolute great save there. Fraser with the corner. Doesn't come to anything. Harry Arta loses the ball again. Ibora with the long ball forward. Ward Gray. Oh, thought that could have turned into something nasty there. Uh, we are ever. Possession is quite equal. Um, more in their favour, I would say. Uh, Smith, Fraser, it's cut out. Iggy Nacho's on the ball up. James Gray, Ndidi, oh, just goes wide. Fuchs. <sighs> Ia, Ake, Cook, Arta. Nice passing. It's going well. Pew put the ball forward. I think the phobia was just offside there. Half an hour gone. It's, the ball is just it's getting away from us a little bit. I thought Pew could have broke there, but it wasn't to be. We're all out of shape now with Pew and Charlie Daniels out of shape. James is through. What a save and cook clears. Great save. It's a Good little firm routine there. And Didi gets cuts out again. Gray, Fuchs, James tries to curl one in. We are losing possession a little bit. What I didn't say is I've made match plans um, throughout the match. So if we go one goal up, which we have, we'll, we'll attack more to try and put the pressure on a little bit more. Um, if we go one goal down, then we'll sit back, go on the counter, try not to concede any more. Um, and if we're drawing from 25 minutes to 45 minutes, then we will put the pressure on. Oh, that's a great block there, but I think that's Charlie Daniels, number 11. Mares was had a clean shot through. Um, we're playing okay. Not as much possession, but as I said, because we've gone one goal up, it's gone more attacking. Um, and a phobie is through there. Can't get through. Dragovic makes a great last-ditch challenge before the shot can get off. Um, yeah, as I said, look, this cross completed is just insane. 7%, 1 of 13. Leicester only got 2 of 8 completed. So I don't know if it's a bug with Football Manager at the moment. But it just just can't seem to get the crosses into where they're supposed to be. So we've picked up another yellow card with Defoe and I are both on yellows. So I might need to uh, change them. So out for the second half, we've not made any changes. We've just told Defoe and Aya to ease off on the tackles. Because they are on yellow cards, I will look to substitute Aya. Um, if I see him getting into some dangerous tackling positions. But we are back on our possession team instructions now. So hopefully we should see a, a rise in the possession stat. And a phobie, oh, he's offside again. Yeah, a phobie is looking to be subbed as well. He's not playing very well at all. It's definite that we're going to miss uh, Callum Wilson in these opening four months while he is injured. And yeah, we're not playing too bad. Um, a good clearance there by Adam Smith. Probably could have got it for a throw. Good clearance again. Fuchs is still there to danger. Maguire's now picked the ball up back to Ndidi. Still a quite a few Leicester players in the box. Sort of retreating now that we're pressing them out. Um, yeah, it's good. That's good. Um, okay, so let's change Benikophobi. Let's bring Joshua King on. Advance forward. Let's see how that works. I mean, so far the Mazala and the Carolero are not working very well together. 
So that's something that we will need to keep an eye on and have a look at. And we'll start with a throw. Jermaine Defoe to Adam Smith's cook. Oh, I thought that was going in. So unlucky. Uh, so King is on now for Benekophobia. Let's see if he brings anything else to the game. It's a great tackle in there. Um, Ake performing quite well with Ayer. It's a great ball forward to Defoe. Can he get the ball? Oh, he's offside again. It's unlucky. Hmm. Game's working well. Um, James and Ndidi sort of controlling Leicester's possession. Let's um, think about another change now. So we've got Sermon and Hinder. I'm going to bring Sermon on in that Carolero role. That's all I'm going to do for now. Um, let's see how Andrew Sermon does. I mean, he was another player that I thought I was going to get rid of, but it turns out he might be quite useful to me this season. All bright with a free kick. Ward, that's a good save by Begovic. As they're throwing Fuchs, Joa, All Brighton, James, Joa, what a save. And there is something I forgot to do. So when they make a sub, the opposition instructions don't carry on. So All Brighton and Ushua don't have the same instructions as everyone else. Um, Ushua will need to be tightly marked. I mean, what you can do is set it to that position, um, but I find it, it takes a little bit longer and I just want to click through, get it done. Bob Shrunkle. But with the corner, I with a good head out. Um, well, I'm assuming it's a head out because uh, they're just dots, so it could be anything. Oh, it's again, it's a very tight game. And we've got the ball, Harry Arta, Sermon. Oh, he's offside. He's offside. Two up would have been a very good thing. Um, Adam Smith puts a ball in, Fraser, Mark Pugh, oh, it's a great block by Maguire, all Brighton picks it up now, Leicester on the counter-attack, and Didi, Ibora, Ujo doesn't make it past, I think that's Aya that blocked him off, which was a good thing, Josh King now, oh, it's offside again, so many offsides, six offsides today, is quite a lot. Now what we can do, we're going to make a final change here. If it works. Um, yeah, we're going to bring Hinman on as the Mazala role. Uh, we'll keep it on support. Keep it on support. So in the Mazala role. I prefer the Mazala role to the Carrillero. Um, although the Carrillero is a good sweeper. Um, oh, Mares Ujoa. And it's gone in. It's unlucky. It is unlucky. So that change, don't know how it's going to affect things, but Hindman, we've got a complete different centre midfield partnership now. Uh, Kings on the ball and straight into Schmeichel. I'm getting worried now that we're. Uh, have we changed our tactic because we're drawing? Um, don't think we have, have we? No, no, that's. Didn't do second half. Said if we go 1 0 down. So, yeah, I suppose they've just scored. They haven't gone 1 0 up. Um, good passing here. Trying. Getting the ball forward. Hinman loses the ball to Ward. Trying to get it to Mark Pugh. Joe has come through again. And oh, he's going to be so close to scoring in a minute. Ake plays the ball forward. Can't get it past you. Joe King's there. Oh, Ake, what are you doing, son? 
That's our free kick. Fraser. Aya. Oh, yeah. He's got there again. Get in there, lad. What a goal. A great set piece from Fraser. Aya's at the back post. No one even marking him. Hits the first one off the post or the save. And then gets the rebound. Lovely, lovely stuff. But 2 1 up now. And so let's try and hold this this win. Oh, oh it's a great save. Gonna tell the team to concentrate. Didn't used to work in FM seventeen. Maybe they fixed it. Hopefully they have. What used to happen is used to tell them to concentrate and they concede straight away. Which I hope it doesn't happen. Begovic is just Hoof the ball after good pressure by Leicester. Um, Ake is getting pressed. Daniels, oh, this is nice passing. Fantastic for King. Defoe was next to him. All he had to do was lay it off to him. Such a disappointing end to that good move. All Brighton, oh, nearly again. We are a bit suspect at the back, but. That is why most of my transfer business was defenders. King is offside again. Seven offsides now for the team. And they've got a corner. It's five minutes added on. A lot of time. All Brighton gets it. Can we counter? Defoe is miles offside there. What is he doing? Might as well sit down and have a cup of tea the other end. Dragovic just went close there. Um, good passing again. I'm I'm liking the passing. Um, it's to be expected with this tactic. Um, I'm not sure why we're getting so many offsides. So many. Uh, that's eight now for the game. King, can you do anything? Daniels Defoe, get in there! Come on, three-one. That's surely game over for Leicester. Jermaine Defoe. It's a great pass by Pew to King. Who just takes it wide, crosses it, gets blocked. Daniel's there to hit it up to Defoe. And pure as you like, strikes it in the bottom corner. And we are 3-1 up. 30 seconds to go. And it's looking like a good victory to start off the series. Fraser with the corner now. Is that going to be the end? Hindman. A wild shot from the edge of the box. And it's a goal kick to Leicester. And that is it. 3-1 winners. Christopher Ayer with two. Jermaine Defoe with a 94th minute strike. Ojoa did try and pull it back for them. But it's a great win for the Bournemouth lads. And we're back. Look at that league tables. So let's have a look uh, when we'll be back for the next episode. Um, I am thinking... Because um, I don't want to do too many home to Man United. Thank you again for watching. It's absolutely amazing the support I'm receiving. So thanks again, guys. If you're new, subscribe. Um, if you haven't checked out Daza FM, check him out. He's a quality guy. Streams on Twitch a lot. Um, there'll be a, a link at the end of the video to his channel. Um, check him out. It's quality, quality lad. He's doing a se series with Hungerford, um, supported by Hungerford in real life, the club. Um, quality, quality stuff. So thanks again, guys. Like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you next time.